63% of U.S. consumers reported living paycheck to paycheck last month, according to a new survey from PYMNTS and Lending Club. The findings come amid high inflation and housing costs, as many Americans tighten their purse strings to help make ends meet. Although the number of Americans living paycheck to paycheck is similar to the rate reported at the same time last year, it's three percentage points higher than in October 2022. The total reach the total reached a historic high of 64% in March 2022. Those earning incomes over 100,000 annually after report also reported the steepest increase in the status, with totals jumping four percentage points from October to November to a total of 47%. In comparison, 76% of Americans with incomes less than 50,000 per year lived paycheck to paycheck last month. Two thirds of those earning between 50,000 and 100,000 each year said the same. PYMNTS and Lending Club carried out the survey among 3,895 U.S. consumers. Of those who reported living paycheck to paycheck, 57% of inflation is making it harder for them to reach long term goals. From a high of 9.1% in July, inflation inched down to 7.1% in November 2022, but is still far away from the desired 2% set by the Federal Reserve, report authors wrote. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve issued its small interest rate hike, its smallest interest rate hike since June, signaling it sees inflation easing. Just over 40% of consumers living paycheck to paycheck said they were able to pay their bills without issue in November, while 31% of those who reported issues said paying off debt is their most pressing short-term financial goal. When it comes to savings, one-third of respondents said they're not currently saving any money, with 60% of those consumers, of these consumers reporting they have no pre-existing savings. 32% of Americans also said they're saving less than a year, less now than a year ago. Paycheck to paycheck consumers are half as likely to be stable savers and seven times more likely than those who do not live paycheck to paycheck to have neither savings nor saving capacity, authors uh, wrote. Um, so I think there are a lot of factors that go into this. I've mentioned, and I, I really don't like getting too autobiographical with news stories because I know it's not a statistic. It's not something I can, you know, prove and say, oh, my circumstance is your circumstance. But over here in California, um, you know, I've been working for several weeks now and have had 40 hour uh, weeks. So, you know, full time. Right. Um, and that's about like 500 bucks, which even if it's totaled up to its entirety over one month is maybe a little, maybe a little bit over 2000, right? And you have these apartments uh, in my state that are 1,800, 1,700. I mean, I think I've even seen, there are some rooms for rent that are priced around the same amount. Just everything is, is 1,000 and then like inching toward 2,000. So that means if I were to go and, um, pay rent somewhere over here every single month, I would only have like, what, $200 left, a hundred. And then you add in the, the, the cost of food. Cause remember that's also, you know, you have to wonder how, how you're going to eat, um, besides just paying the rent. It's really borderline impossible to live anywhere over here with that, with that salary. Like I, I've even said before, I'd have to basically get two jobs and then work one of them probably overtime on the week it, it, it's it, it's really insane um but just kind of going over some of the stuff that i think is interesting about this article it mentions that um when people are, are living paycheck to paycheck that a lot of them can't save and that, and that is true uh they don't have they don't have the ability to do that because every time they turn around they have to pay for another bill and usually it's a bill that costs about as much as they make so it's kind of like taking one step forward, one step back. You, you know, you you were able to succeed in, I guess, um, paying your rent. But then, as far as actually going up further in the economic ladder, no dice. And that's why I said the U.S. to me is such an interesting country because a lot of its defenders are these people who tell you that you know if you just try hard enough, you can make it. If you go to school, you can make it. And we we talk about how. There's something wrong when people who go to school and, and graduate and get these degrees are then hamstrung with 
uh, an anchor of debt for the for decades after they get the piece of paper. And there's something wrong when a person works 40 hours a week and they can't afford, a, a, I mean, a little tiny apartment. We're talking about apartments that don't even have two bedrooms. They might have a little bathroom on the side. And stuff like that is going for almost $2,000. So if you want to just live in this little tiny one-room shack, all of your money is gone like that. That's why I said that they, like there, there's something wrong with the system that's that way because the things people are requesting are not extreme. Um, and we've now had it proven that even if you do everything right, work the 40-hour job, don't buy any unnecessary stuff, you still can get screwed. So um, I have a lot of sympathy for, for you know, the, the current economic struggle of people. And I, I wish things were better. I wish these apartments didn't cost this much. I, I just, it, it's so interesting how, like, I look at a lot of the other bills, um, you know, that, like, with gas and electricity and, again, with food and, like, all of this stuff, these are things I could afford on the salary that I have. But an actual apartment where every month I have to, like, it, it's just, it's not possible, especially when you consider that when we talk about paycheck to paycheck and the little subtle nuances of things, some of these jobs will just decide for someone, hey, you're not working tomorrow. And then there goes another, what, hundred something dollars out of your next check. So, it, you know, it's it's a really awful situation that uh, there's there seems to be no answers to. It's kind of this thing where you just get screwed over and, you know, I, I guess you have to figure it out for yourself. But I, I don't think anyone should have to work six or seven days a week with two jobs or even possibly three to just be able to live somewhere by themselves. It's not even that big. Um, but unfortunately, we live, we live in an era where if people aren't going through something, they like to blame somebody for their situation. So they'll, they'll tell the same group of people who work every single week that they're lazy and they deserve to not have their own place. Because uh, that's, that's, that's just, empathy just is not a thing that exists in a lot of Americans, unfortunately.